your extravagance of your love for all and its presence in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Pastor Kay, what's new? How long do you have? Well, I am very glad to be back among you, and I'm still catching up with many of you, but I truly want to know what you've been up to the last three months and what's new in your life. There are lots of new things here in the church. The first things I noted the first day I pulled up and parked on August 1 were the solar panels. And then the next thing I saw was the lettering on the doors and the beautiful planters that are here on this side, and there's one here. There are other things in the church, the new projector and other signs, and I keep seeing new things. But there are more things that are new that are sad. There are more new empty spots because we had some people who went on to heaven over this summer. But this morning, there are new people, and we're so glad you're here and we welcome you. If I asked each of you, what's new? I imagine I would hear about some of the things that the children said, new scars, new bruises from baseball or riding bike. I might hear about a new job or a new boss or maybe a new house that some of you moved into. I might hear about new exp uh, experiences at camp, or maybe a new vacation place that you tried this summer. Again, some, especially the children, would talk about me, tell me about the new teacher in the new classroom, or, or maybe a new school that you're going to. Again, the not so fun things to talk about are the new wounds that you experienced. Maybe new broken relationships, new hurts and heartaches. I trust we all have some kind of a response to the question, what's new? And for some of us, our immediate response is nothing, nada, same old, same old. This is actually where we are challenged by our scripture from Isaiah. It clamors for us to pause, look around, no, actually energetically search for what God is doing. Isaiah, a prophet among the Israelites, is telling the people that God is making a bold proclamation that God is doing a new thing. But, but let's back up a minute. How did we get there? Throughout Israel's history, and it is recorded all through the Old Testament, there were times of listening and being in covenant and right relationship with God, and then something would happen, and the Israelites would fall away, the covenant would be broken, relationships would be broken, there would be disobedience. Then God would come back towards the people, remind them, and they would again say, ah, yes, we will worship and serve you, God. And it would happen time and time again. So here at the beginning of chapter 43, Isaiah begins by reminding the people of God's love and how God's presence was a constant in their lives. And then we get to the verses we heard this morning, verse 19, where God proclaims, but now I am doing a new thing. I love the King James Version, which says, Behold, and that, I love that lyric in the hymn that we sang, Behold, I make all things new. Look, see, wake up, pay attention. God was inviting the Israelites and invites us today to pay attention. It may not be obvious at first what God is up to, but God is on the move. So, a question I pose here and will pose again later. How do we respond? One way, one idea, is just to take a step, even a small step, in the direction that you perceive God is moving. And we're going to sing a little fun song about that.
Abraham willingly offered his son up to God. When Noah was building the ark, people thought he was odd. And then there was Moses at the Red Sea and Daniel in the lion's den. Each of these people and so many more show us again and again. You gotta take that step of faith. You gotta take that step of faith. Stand right up and shove those doubts right out of your way. Come on and take that step of faith. Just take that step of faith. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that step of faith. Walking with Jesus is really so simple. Just trust and obey. Come on and take an itty bitty tiny step of faith. You have been called for a purpose, and God has a plan. Don't you know He has a plan for your life? He loves you, so what are you worried about? He left about? an example to follow, so you'd understand. That's right, and without Him, we can never really know the Father. So establish your footsteps in His Word, the love of God in your heart, and you will not stumble, you will not fall. The first step will take you so far. You gotta take that step of faith. You gotta take that step of faith. Stand right up and shove those doubts right out of your way. Come on and take that step of faith. Just take that step of faith. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that step of faith. Walking with Jesus is really so simple. Just trust and obey. Come on and take an itty bitty tiny step of faith. Faith is the assurance of things that we hope for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith you can conquer, receive all God's promises, if you will only believe. Take that step of faith, you gotta take that step of faith. Stand right up and jump those doubts right out of your way, come on and take that step of faith. Take that step of faith. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that step of faith. Walking with Jesus is really so simple. Just trust and obey. You Come on and take an itty bitty tiny step of faith. Walking with Jesus is really so simple. So if you have faith even only a little, just take an itty bitty teeny tiny tiny step of faith. Recognizing walking with Jesus is not always easy. Things are not always simple. But God walks with us as well. That first step can be so hard. We second guess our discernment. We rationalize, oh, that, that's not my gift. We don't have time. Or so and so would do a much better job than I. We're afraid we will fail or somehow mess up what God is doing, although I don't really think that's possible. Maybe we are just afraid. There can be a time and a place for fear. Fear could help us slow down or even stop, therefore avoiding a particular disaster or pause to carefully plan the next step. But when fear grabs a hold of us, even paralyzing us, immobilizing us, that is when we need to do our very best to release it to God and then jump with our whole selves into the deep end of God's pool of steadfast love and mercy. The beginning of chapter 43 in Isaiah reminds us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. There's no better place to be 
than to be surrounded by God's strength and to be holding on with everything you have to Jesus. Just like Algerius. Algerius was a youth who lived in the middle 1500s in present-day Italy. He was a student. When an Anabaptist brother came to his town, Algerius had conversation, asked him questions about the Lord's will and way. Accepting that way, he confessed faith in Jesus and was baptized. Now, being baptized in the middle 1500s is not like being baptized today, not like the wonderful celebration we had with Colton last week. Do you know where this is going? Sometime afterward, he was imprisoned and wrote to the brothers and sisters in Italy from his prison cell. He was transferred to Venice where attempts were made to convince him to renounce his newfound faith. But Algerius held firm and was sent to Rome. After hard imprisonment, he was executed there. You can read the full story in Martyr's Mirror. Part of a letter he wrote on July 12, 1557, tells of his buoyant faith. In a state of misery, I have had very great delight. In a lonely corner, I have had the most glorious company, and in the severest bond, great rest. All these things the gracious hand of God has given me. Is there any like God, the Most High, who sustains and refreshes those that are tempted, he heals them that are bruised and wounded and restores them all together. None is like him. Learn, most beloved brethren, how sweet the Lord is, how faithful and merciful. He gives us a cheerful mind and a peaceful heart. Only someone who believed deeply and embraced the words from the verses in Lamentations that we heard, only that person would be able to write that. What a testimony to God's faithfulness, God's mercies that are new every morning. And it isn't because God slept during the night and in that way replenished God's store of love and mercy to then be able to shower on us. No, God does not slumber or sleep. God is, and God's supply never runs out. We are the ones who need the reminder that each day is a new day with God's faithfulness that is unending. We're going to share a version of the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Morning by morning Morning by morning Great is thy faith O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not, as Thou hast been the forever. Jesus. 
I pose the question again. Friends, what are we to do? How are we to respond? Can we grow in noticing God's movement? Can our spiritual eyesight get sharper in seeing where God is moving? Can we courageously take even a small step of faith in a direction where we feel God nudging us? It might involve some change. Some of us thrive on change, but others really struggle with it. They experience the chronic adjustment disorder. I think that's kind of the same term like what Sky did is. Boy, that took me a while to figure that out. Not a real disorder, but I might feel that way. Would you join me and participate in reading a prayer that I came across written based on this scripture by Rachel Hackenberg. I invite you to read the line indicated by many. I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I put my hands on my hips in a position of prayer. Really? Where is it? I don't see it. I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I put my hands over my eyes in a position of prayer. Really? Is that it? There? Ugh. I don't want it. I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I wrap my arms around my knees in a position of prayer. Oh, please don't let this be the new thing. I can't do it. I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I lay my head down in a position of restful prayer. This new thing can only be yours. I, we, are yours too. And we are God's. We can claim our identity and our newness in Christ each day, according to our scripture from 2 Corinthians 5. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Every day is a new chance, a new opportunity to worship, to serve God, to learn, to grow in faith. Every day is a new day to love each other, to help, to encourage each other. And God is always, always with us, no matter where we are, no matter where we're going. God is right there beside us, seeing and knowing. May we find comfort and peace and strength in that knowledge and may you look, see, perceive the new that God has for you and for us in the coming days. I invite you to remain seated as we offer a sending song. <laughs>